I joined Spooks as a, as a jobbing writer. My first episode was episode nine of series five, uh, which was a well-liked and popular episode. Uh, so Kudos, the producers of Spooks, invited me thereafter to be the lead writer on series six and subsequently series seven. It's a wonderful privilege to kill Adam Carter. In fact, this is, a, this is an unofficial tally, so don't call the Guinness Book of Records, but I think that I've got the record for killing the greatest number of characters in Spooks. I've got the highest hit rate. Uh, but killing Adam, of course, was uh, in that respect kind of the cherry on the cake. And I managed to upset people all over the world, which is kind of a unique privilege, really. Luther is going to be a, a primetime crime thriller on BBC One next year. Uh, Luther is a very different kind of crime show, a very different kind of crime thriller. John Luther is a brilliant mind which nevertheless is subject to terrible, sometimes overwhelming human passions. Uh, and he's a man whose desire, whose need to see justice done, sometimes, often, outstrips his dedication to the law itself. So Luther, although a police officer and a very good, very talented police officer, often finds himself in situations where he has to act outside the law in order to bring justice to the victims and their families. Luther's what's called a how catch him, which is a, a genre which started with crime and punishment and was followed through most famously and most successfully before by Columbo. And then we know at the beginning of each episode on the whole who the baddie is and, uh, and what the crime is and how the murder was committed. And we witness from that point a psychic duel between Luther and usually a brilliant and violent criminal. And what keeps us on tender hooks and keeps us scared and engaged is how and if Luther is going to catch this psychopath. Seeing your book on the shelves of a bookshop for the first time isn't the feeling of uncomplicated glory that you expect when you're an ambitious first-time novelist. It's always much more complex than that. It's a wonderful thing to see your book ranked up on the shelves. If there's too many ranked up on the shelves, you think, why are they all there? Why is nobody buying it? And if you see too few on the shelves, you think, can anybody see it? Why is nobody buying it? With my previous novel, Burial, and increasingly so with this new novel, Captured, we start to keep a nightmare tally of uh, how many people have been kept up overnight with fear, which is a very gratifying feeling. Holloway is a character who came to me fully, almost as a real person. And he's a character with whom I fell in love the minute we met and whose company I very much enjoy. So I find myself with every subsequent book trying to find a place to put William Holloway just as a guest character, just so that he can pop along and say hello. So it's my intention and hope that he stars in as many future books as possible. William Holloway and I, I think, have a long future together. A number of my readers are nervous to meet me because my books contain depravity and violence. Um, people do tend to worry that I might be depraved myself. And I'm the opposite of depraved. I'm a very ordinary family man. And what I tend to explain to my readers is that my books aren't about what I want to do to other people. They're about what I'm scared other people might do to me one day.